Hey, what is going on guys? Extra Fusion here, and today I got my Avengers Endgame review video for you guys. I just saw the movie. Before I go into this video, this will contain spoilers. So if you have not seen it, please do not watch the video, and please do not spoil it for other people. If you want to talk about spoilers in the comment section below, go ahead, because it is a spoiler video. Just, you know, happy be known that it is going to include spoilers. But do not go to other people's channels, go to other people and spoil it, because those are the worst human beings ever. The worst. I, I can't stand people who spoil things. So, that's it. And it really does take away from the experience when you already know what's going to happen. It does. I want to start off this video saying, this is, without a doubt, my favorite, not only my favorite Marvel movie, not only my favorite superhero movie, but I think I'm confident enough to say it is my favorite movie of all time. Now, before you freak out, I haven't seen every movie. So there's some movies out there that you might consider be better. That's fine. But remember, it's my favorite movie. Do I think it's the best movie? I, I, there's probably movies that are better written, better overall, you know, acted and better, just better overall movies. I'm sure there are. But in terms of what my favorites are, this is my favorite movie of all time. I can easily say that. Infinity War was my favorite movie for a while, obviously, until this one, and now I think Endgame has trumped it. But honestly, Endgame is kind of like the same thing. It's literally just a continuation to Infinity War. It's a part one and a part two, and it's done beautifully. Like, that was the original plan was to call it Infinity War Part 1 and Infinity War Part 2. I guess they wanted to make Endgame feel a little more separate, and I'm kind of glad they did that. It sounds better calling the Avengers Endgame than Infinity War Part 2, but it basically is Infinity War Part 2. Let's get into the nitty gritties now. I'm going to bring up one complaint, and it's such a small thing. It's not even that big of a deal. Some scenes, I felt like they reused soundtracks from Infinity War often. Honestly, I'm fine with that, but it is kind of annoying when like you, you hear the same soundtrack you just heard in a previous movie and you hear it again i mean i like getting callbacks to previous soundtracks like the avengers soundtrack yeah of course you gotta repeat that of course but like for example the soundtrack when gamora died in infinity war repeated the same way when black widow died you know it, it just it sounded weird how they repeated the same soundtrack but there's certain soundtracks i'm fine with them repeating and i think they should repeat like for example the avengers soundtrack or like sometimes they had ant-man's theme playing in there which was really cool in some of the more exciting Ant-Man scenes, which Ant-Man was great in this film. If I want to talk about characters that have the most screen time and the most excitement of their character in this film, I'd say Captain America, Iron Man, of course, top two. Thor, even though he was chubby, which I found to be really funny, he still had a lot of stuff to do. Nebula? Nebula was huge in this film. I really thought she was going to die because she started having a lot of screen time out of nowhere. And I'm glad that she did because I think her character is interesting. Um, who else had a lot of screen time? I'd say Black Widow, Hawkeye, they both had a decent amount of screen time. Thanos did not have nearly as much screen time as he did last film, but he definitely had some some portion of importance, of course. Uh, and then Ant-Man. Ant-Man was huge in this film. A lot of Ant-Man. He was the main he was one of the main reasons they even succeeded because of the quantum realm stuff that he knew, which I was a big fan of. I didn't think I would. I literally, I went into this movie without any idea was was what the hell is gonna happen. I didn't. I didn't get spoiled, which I'm very thankful I didn't. So the movie was fresh to me. I'm really glad it stayed that way. But my God, it was just outstanding from start to finish. Now, if you're not a Marvel fan, I could see why you might have not enjoyed the movie that much. Cause like I was with, I went with a couple of my friends. Um, one of my friends, huge Marvel fan, huge Avengers fan. Not as much as me, of course, but he's still a pretty big fan. He loved the movie. My other two friends, though, they're not really huge into movies or superhero movies or Marvel. They like to see them, of course. So they didn't enjoy the movie that much. And obviously, we had arguments. We were like, I was like, bro, you only like the movie because you're not really that big of an Avengers or superhero fan. That's obvious, but that's fine. You know, you have your preferences, you have your personal opinions. But for a Marvel fan, for someone who has seen every movie in the previous installments, all 22 of them up to this point, this movie is like, it, it's like, it's like warm apple pie on a Christmas 
afternoon. It, it's just, it's the greatest thing ever. I had such a good time watching it. I was so glued into the screen. I will admit I missed a minute of the film because I had to piss. I was not, de look, I understand you want to hold in your piss, you know, stuff like that. But sometimes you just, it ruins the experience when you, you keep thinking about you have to pee. So I, I took one scene, I forget what scene, I think it was like right before they forged the Iron Man Infinity Gauntlet thingy with all the thingies while they were talking in the Avengers thing. I was like, this is probably a decent time to go. And I'm going to see the movie again tomorrow, so it's whatever. I'll see that scene again, obviously. Um, but I didn't, didn't think I'd miss anything huge, which I'm thankful for. And I'm really excited to see it again. Maybe I'll get a different outlook on it. Maybe I'll like it even more. Maybe I won't like it even more. I don't know. I, I definitely think I'm going to like it more second time around because it happened with Infinity War. I loved Infinity War first time around, but I think second time I loved it even more. And mainly because I had really bad seats. I mean, I know this isn't even a review anymore. This is me talking about my experience. But, you know, that's part of the review sometimes. I had terrible seats. I was actually, like, up front, basically, because I got there an hour early, but it was still packed. I'm like, holy shit, these guys are even bigger nerds than I am. So that was pretty crazy. Um, now let's get into the actual movie itself. I want to talk about the deaths because those are probably the most hard-hitting scenes in the film. So first of all, Black Widow. Is she dead dead? I don't know because Black Widow has a solo movie coming up. Now, if she's dead dead, obviously that solo movie would have to be a prequel then. Will people care about it if it's a prequel though? Because then it's just like, oh, it's just a prequel. It's not really important to the main story and it's only going to develop Black Widow's character, I assume. So how is it really going to be all that great? The only way I think they could really make a Black Widow film really, really good is is if they give us a movie with Black Widow and Hawkeye in Budapest. Because they keep talking about whatever shit they were doing in Budapest. And we have no idea what they did. So give us a movie and show us what the hell happened. And in the same movie, show us you know, Black Widow's backstory. Maybe you can show us some Hawkeye's backstory. And that would actually be interesting. Now that's if she's dead dead. Which I think she is. Because if she wasn't, they would probably bring her back towards the end of the film. But they didn't. So that also means Gamora's dead dead. But not old Gamora. It's just the new Gamora, the one that fell in love with Quill. Now they just have Gamora who doesn't really love Quill, at least from what we've seen. So Gamora's alive, but only a certain version of her, I guess. But I assume she went back to her old world because that's what has to happen. I don't know. So is Gamora gone gone? I, that kind of sounds like it. I hope not because she's one of my favorite characters. Then Loki. I think Loki's gone gone, unfortunately. But, um, you know, you have to have some people die, die, right? Hemdel, he's probably dead. The rest of the Asgardians, yes, they're dead. Basically, anyone who died, but it wasn't by the snap, is dead, dead. Vision, as well. I forgot about Vision for a second. He sounds like he's dead, dead. But then we have this brand new TV show with Wanda and Vision in the film together, which or the TV show, which... Does that mean it's going to be a prequel, or I don't know, Does, will it be in between Age of Ultron and Civil War, or in between Civil War and Infinity War? I don't know. I don't. And then Loki, I think, has a TV show happening too, at least, so that would have to be a prequel, right? I don't know. We do have the Falcon and Winter Soldier TV show, which I'm really excited for because Captain America kind of passed the torch off to Falcon, which I thought he was going to pass it off to uh, Bucky, but... I'm honestly fine with Falcon being. I really don't care. I think that works just fine. And uh, it'll be interesting to see them together in a TV show. Because it sounds like the Avengers is going to consist of Spider-Man, Hulk, Hawkeye, Thor, Black Panther. Like well, Panther's never really, never really part of the Avengers. But you get what I mean. Like in terms of heroes, Doctor Strange, uh, Captain Marvel, unfortunately. But I, 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 no, I'm, look, I... I didn't like the actress of that plays Captain Marvel, and I still don't. Um, but the character, I'm able to get past and be like, all right, it's not that horrible. I was going to be pissed if she killed Thanos, though. Thank the Lord she didn't. Thank the Lord she got her ass taken care of by Thanos. I was so happy that happened. Couldn't even tell you. I was the only person in the entire theater cheering when she got flung by Thanos with the power stone, I was the only person in the theater cheering. Oh, okay, so you had some fantastic things. Let me talk about the surprising things. This was a very surprising movie. Iron Man having a daughter. That was surprising. The time skip, the five-year time skip was huge. 
huge. I didn't expect that when they showed. F I thought that was really br brilliantly done when they showed the five on the screen, and then it just said years later. I, the whole theater was like, "Holy shit!" And I was too. Other surprising things. Um, Black Widow's death was surprising. I thought Hawkeye was about to take it, but then I realized they're just developing Hawkeye, and he's kind of starting to turn interesting and cool. So probably not. I think we've seen a lot more of Black Widow. But then I was kept thinking in my back of my mind, well, she has a solo film, so how the hell are they going to do that? And then I thought, yeah, probably prequel. Hulk being half Hulk, half Banner, I love that, but also was interesting and kind of um, surprising. Them using the Quantum Realm as time travel, I actually didn't expect that. I expected them to find Thanos, take the Time Stone from him, and then somehow try to bring back time. Look, I remember seeing these leaks that... The original Avengers, like from the original Avengers film, were like back dressed up and filming. I was like, holy shit, that means we're going to see time travel. They're going to go back to the, the fight in New York. I'm going to be honest, I completely forgot about that. Like I saw that leak a while ago. Like it was probably a couple, like eight or so months ago. But I forgot about that. And when I went to this movie, I did not not think that was going to come back. And then I heard they were going back to the original places to find the time zone. I was like, holy shit. And we see... The freaking Avengers, the original film, scenes from that, that was amazing. That point, actually the point where I realized to myself this is fan-fucking-tastic and this is phenomenal, I cannot be more happy with this film, was honestly the scene when Captain America was fighting Captain America in the one, the one place. I, I just was so immersed in everything that was happening. And then we had Guardians of the Galaxy, the scene with... Peter Quill, Star-Lord, dancing to that song. Oh my god. I am so glad I watched every, or at least the majority of Marvel movies before seeing this. Like, I did like a whole watch where I went from Iron Man all the way to Infinity War. So glad I did. Because some of these callbacks to the original films only made sense, or only at least was, it was more impactful. To see that on screen, like, for someone who has never seen the other movies or has only seen maybe Infinity War, they're going to be like, okay, I don't know what the hell is happening. Which is unfortunate. That's why this movie is only for the, in my opinion, it's only really good for the true Marvel fans. For people who aren't really that into it, they've maybe seen a few of them here and there, they're not going to love it that much. So, I'm thankful I got into this universe beforehand because it would be unfortunate to see this. And then be like, oh, now I have to go back and watch all the other ones. But then you already knew what happened in this one. Like, seeing this after all those years. And I'm not trying to say I'm an OG Marvel fan. I started watching in, like, 2015 with Ant-Man. That was my first Marvel movie was freaking Ant-Man. So, yeah. I'm not that I'm not that new. I mean, I always loved Spider-Man before that. But I just was like, I didn't really care for Iron Man, Captain America, all, all, all these other Avengers movies. I didn't care. I didn't want to watch them. They sounded boring to me. I was, I was a Spider-Man guy. I just want to see new Spider-Man. Then I heard Spider-Man was going to the MCU. I was like, shit. Guess I'm going to have to watch Civil War because Spider-Man's in it, so I'll try it out. Um, I watched Ant-Man before that, though, of course, because I thought Ant-Man looks really dope. So I was like, all right, got to check that out. And then I watched Civil War the next year, and I fell in love with it. And then I realized I got to go back and watch all the other ones. I have to. So I'm not that long. For someone who's probably been watching since 2008 and with Iron Man, Probably like this movie even more than I did. Because I've only been watching Marvel movies, or MCU movies specifically, for like the past three or four years. So it's not as insane as it is for other people. But for me, it was still an incredible experience. And we all just got to see scenes from Thor The Dark World. We got to see, like I said, the Guardians of the Galaxy thing. Um, then we got to see Vormir again. The most surprising thing was actually them killing Thanos in the first 10 seconds or 10, 15 minutes of the movie. Like when they chopped off his head, I was like, holy shit. Obviously, I knew he was going to come back. I, I obviously knew he was in some way going to still be a part of the movie. And I loved how the time travel worked. I loved the way they didn't make time travel seem like some cliche, like stupid idea. Like, oh, oh, time travel. Like, you know what I mean? Like for someone who probably isn't a big fan of Marvel movies, they probably would have thought that. But I like how the Rooster Brothers are so incredible at dialogue. And I know they're directors, but they still write the movies for the most part, I, at least I believe they do. Um, just the dialogue is so well done. Like, them thinking about all the other, like, movies that have had time travel and being like, that's ridiculous. That's obviously not going to work. And they bring it up. And then they make it make sense. They make time travel 
sound like an actual thing that could happen in real life. That's when you know the writers are incredible, when they actually made time travel sound plausible for our world, which obviously it's not, but it sounded like it was, and I could, I believed it. I believed in time travel in this film. It made sense. It worked, and that's why the Russo brothers are the greatest things to ever happen in the MCU, because yes, it was great before them, but I would argue that it started getting really good when they were introduced. Yes, the Avengers was great. Yes, the original Iron Man was great, but... When did the MCU really started getting consecutive amazing movies around the Winter Soldier when the Rooster Brothers came in? And how is it not a coincidence that before the top like five, I would say, best MCU movies all come from the Rooster Brothers? You got Winter Soldier, incredible. Civil War, incredible. Infinity War, incredible. Endgame, incredible. Four of like some of the best in the in the universe are some of the most incredible. So I gotta take my tap. I gotta take my uh, hat off to them. Tip my hat off, whatever the phrase is. Uh, Russo, one of the Russo brothers actually appeared in the film. If you didn't realize, in that one scene with Captain America, I'm just, I, I want to see it again, man. There's some scenes I already forgot about a little bit, and I'm just, I really want to rewatch it to get. I, actually, wait. Let me stop myself right there. I didn't even mention easily the greatest scene I've ever seen in a movie in my entire life, and there's some pretty amazing scenes out there. The best scene I've ever watched in a movie was that damn scene when I, uh, Captain America, his shield's broken, he's looking out to Thanos and his entire army. When I saw that army coming, I was like, holy shit. I was honestly about getting ready to be disappointed because I thought it was just going to be Thor, Cap, and Iron Man fighting Thanos and maybe they'd beat him eventually. I, I, for some reason, I don't know why I thought that, but I thought that was going to happen. And I was like, okay, that's cool, them fighting Thanos, but... That's not big. I want to see a big battle. And it happened. It freaking happened. So, of course, Captain America looks off. And then he looks behind him. And Black Panther comes out. And I don't even like Black Panther that much. But I was still cheering for him. And then you see all the other portals open. And Spidey comes. And Falcon. And Winter Soldier. And Scarlet Witch. And the whole army from... Not just the Wakandans. But, like, you had the um, people from Valkyries whatever Valkyrie's people, you had the Korg guy, I think you had some other armies there, I, I don't remember exactly who was there, and then you see a whole, it was like a comic book splash page of all the heroes just lined up, and they just panned out so beautifully to all of them, showcasing each and every one of the characters, everyone was included, and look, I'm really glad Captain Marvel wasn't in a lot of the movie, and I know people like her, some people do, some people don't, I'm just glad she wasn't because this is a culmination of all the films we've seen previously. Captain Marvel is so new that, yes, they did a good job at piecing her in here and there. So we're like, okay, we, we got understand more of her. So we're able to accept her more in some more movies. But if she was like one of the main characters in this film and she almost took the spotlight and ended up killing Thanos, which is what I was really afraid of them doing... That would have been horrible, but I'm really glad they didn't do that. I'm really glad they actually gave our main heroes the spotlight, and that was the greatest thing about this film, in my opinion. It was. There was that little cringe SJW moment when all the all the females just like lined up and they were like, "We got this." I'm sorry, that was cringy. I look, I understand you females, you want to feel good about yourself sometimes, but that that was kind of cringy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, that, one of the only moments in the film where I cringed. Everything else, I loved. All the jokes landed, man. Like, sometimes jokes in Marvel movies sometimes don't land for me. Like, they're like, okay, that's not really that funny. Um, but all of them landed. I laughed at everything. The majority of stuff. I laughed a lot in this film. And it's Endgame. I didn't think I would laugh. But Marvel has a really good way of including funny moments into their films. It did. Could it be shaved down this movie a little bit to be a little shorter? I think it could have, personally. Should it have been? No. I don't think it should have. I think it was a perfect length. I think it could have done shorter, but I don't think it was necessary to make it shorter. I think it was just fine. Yes, there was... Maybe they should have done an intermission, though. I feel like they could have found a point where they could have been like, all right, let's let's do an intermission. One of the best scenes, almost forgot, um, when Ant-Man looked off and after they did the snap with the glove, and Ant-Man looks off and he sees Thanos' ship and they just fire down onto the... The freaking facility that was insanity insanity the one scene at the end too 
at Iron Man's funeral where they showcased all the different people in like the um the dress wear. That was really nice. One thing I was confused about for a second was Captain America's the death. I don't I don't know what to call it because he didn't die, but I understood. I understood it for some. How I see it is, he wanted to obviously bring back the stones. Is what he did, but he realized when he was in there that he wanted to just live his life without being a superhero. He just wanted to be a husband to Peggy because she is the love of his life. That's what she was, and that's what she still is. So. He went back. What the hell happened to that one blonde girl from Civil War and the Winter Soldier? Peggy's, like, granddaughter? Her daughter, was it? I don't know. I'm glad they brought back Jane, though. I was really happy they brought back Jane. I, I don't know. I like consistency in the universe. I like when they bring back all the characters from previous films. So I was glad about that. One of the most exciting scenes, I think, was when they were in New York. That was insane. But... My God, I just am blo- I can't even. I can't. Words can't describe how blown away I am by this film. They can't. I want to cut this short here because I'm just going to go on a tangent about how amazing it is for way too long. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.